Hey, hey, car people, how you doing? Jason Phillips, Auto Appraise, AutoAppraise.com. I'm doing a pre-purchase inspection today on one of 503 Charger Daytonas built in 1969. And we um, got the car up on a rack. We're going to go through the underbody. I ran out of magnets, but you get the general idea. The car was comprehensively restored. Very nice looking car. And we've got good adhesion all around. That's a factory overlap uh, seam, so there's always filler right in this area. Bonding the rocker to the quarter. Door corners are nice. I've got no magnet here because it's a little bit less adhesive there. It'll stick for a second and then fall. So it's been skim coated, no doubt. There we go, I got one to stick. Took digital meter readings all the way around the car. Car's got uh, good, good readings in most areas. Uh, some of the readings are coming up INFL, which means it reads higher than 30.5 on the gauge. But you can see a magnet will still stick in that general range of 30 to 32 mils of paint. Well, the reflective quality is real nice. Like I said, I'm going to run the hoist back up and we'll go through the car and the numbers. This is a pre-purchase inspection ordered by a prospective buyer. If you need service like this, call us 800-301-3886. Already inspected this side of the car with magnets, but I had to steal my magnets and get them to the other side. Didn't have enough to go around. As you're aware, if you're looking at a video inspection service like this, this video gets produced for the guy who ordered the report. It only gets released to the public after he has viewed it and made a decision on the vehicle. It usually takes a couple, three weeks anyway. So uh, just to let you know, the video is a little older usually when you get to it. There's the original quarter panel tabs on both sides. I just pointed out inner splashes are beautiful, excellent shape. Trunk extensions are really nice. Pinch welds look great. The car was uh, built in Hamtramck, shipped to Reno, Nevada. Probably the reason the car stayed so nice and dry underneath. Factory spot welds are easily visible there along the bottoms of the quarter panels. I do believe they're original. This tail panel looks to be original. Someone might have hooked a chain on it long ago right in that radius, but I put a gauge on it. And it hasn't been uh, filled or repaired. So it's in good shape. Correct rectangle port, exhaust tips. Level of restoration executed was really, really nice on this car. Tank and straps are in nice shape. All the exhaust has been coated. You can see there's no patches up there in the rear uh, wheel splashes. Textured um, black POR 15 or similar was added. Spring hardware all looks real nice. Uh, looking at the die holes and the rails, you can see those look nice and straight and clean. Part numbers stamped, and they could be read through the paint still, at least on the passenger side. So the rails look real good, no buckles. New pinion snubbers were put in. I don't know what the age of the restoration is. I believe it was around 2011. There's a lot of paperwork on the car. Fuel lines, proper clips, proper routing, inner, uh, inner rocker panel pinch welds all look very, very, let me focus on that, all look very, very nice. Hey, there's a nice one. Hey, there's a nice one. No shortage of nice cars in this barn. Floor pans don't have any patches visible. And everything is a duplicate left to right. Didn't see anything worthy of mention. Already been here about two hours and combed over the car. Took a lot of still photos for the prospective purchaser. H-pipe uh, exhaust was flattened out a little bit here. Eight and three quarter, 355. All the hair hardware and seals look like they were gone through and restored. Numbers recorded and photographed. And up here, forward rails, uh, again, same story. Wheel splashes, same story. No physical or apparent damage 
to contend with. That's nice. No tears. Looks like this uh, may have gotten chained down at some point, but it's not torn. Don't see any welds or repairs there. They got hooked on to trailers and hooked up on trailers and moved around a bit. Taken out to race, I would imagine, and hauled to car shows in this case. Center link's got nice detail, painted a lighter cast silver. Uh, tie rod ends a little darker gray. Just nice, nice detail between the pitman and idler arms and all the suspension put together uh, nicely with a sufficient amount of detail. All the bushings and hardware, everything was cleaned, painted. Insides of the fender's done really nice. Front disc brakes, ball joints are all in really good shape left and right. I don't think the car's seen much road time since its restoration, very little. I went through and recorded and photographed all the numbers earlier. Uh, this can be uh, freeze frame, and so the prospective buyer is able to look at what I have seen, what was found on the vehicle. Car comes with a couple folders full of paperwork. I went through some of it. There's a original broadcast sheet and some photocopies of it, an original hand uh, written copy of the Daytona shipments. This looks like the third Daytona shipped out on 816 of 69. Interesting. And then here the car was registered with Superbirds of America back on January 23rd, 1977, in that owner's name. Uh, VIN 8399, so it's this car. And notice down at the bottom, he says, I would like to sell it for $3,500. Imagine if you bought a wing car in 1977, if you had 3500 and then you might have thought of it as the one that got away. According to the notes, one of the previous owners does not want to be contacted or questioned about this car. I can only imagine that's probably the reason why. Poor guy. All right, let's get to the numbers. Um, I've got still photos of all these that we'll present to the prospective purchaser on behalf of uh, this work we're performing. The seller was kind enough to let me use this hoist in his garage so I didn't have to get my jacks and stands out today. Up here is our engine pad on the right hand side of the oil pan rail and uh, I've got good stills of that but you can see there we go. Let's come back here, side of the transmission, a couple inches back uh, from the uh, bell housing flange. There's our tranny stamp, and it matches as well. According to the fender tag that I uh, transcribed a little earlier, I haven't finished doing that, but the car was uh, built on 427. Uh, interesting that the production of these started on April 28th, and it was... 1969 and the production ended for Daytona's June 10th. So it's a couple days or a day or so in conflict with uh, some of Galen's facts, uh, but you know, everything was kind of handwritten back in the day and it's more like guidelines. Tranny's in good shape. All the seals uh, look to be in pretty nice shape. Everything's pretty clean. I don't see any, any major stains on the exhaust. A little bit of pitting here on this downpipe. Engine casting date, casting number. Engine was cast 11 16 68. So cast approximately five months before the build of the car. 235 60R 15 BFGs. They're in really nice shape. Uh, those wheels have been um, replated, refinished, and all four of them look like that. They're all really nice. Rear tires are just a bit bigger, P255s, but looking real good. All the detail work under the car is just super comprehensive. I don't think I can say enough about it. I like the way it looks. Pinch welds look really, really nice. All the factory spot welds are all evident. One side looks the same as the other. No swelling, no indication of any, you know, aged rot or decay. Studying closely, I haven't seen much in the um, regard for paint flaws. There's a small chip right there, a little entry chip that was touched up. And before I put my magnets on, it looked real good while it was on the ground. Not really any even visible stone splash on the back uh, quarter splashes. You can see the reflective quality is real nice. It's a base clear finish. 
correct style uh, mufflers with the uh, indentations. Those are in real nice shape, no heat burn off. So again, very few miles driven on this car. And again, more of the same. Nice reflection. Uh, no stone splash. Wheel lip moldings fit very nicely. Pinch welds, bottom of the rockers were finished off real nice. Whoever was painting this car obviously had a hoist and put it to good use. That looks like just a little dirt spot. That will come off. And the car is very period straight. I wouldn't say that it was, you know, excessively straight, but it's real straight. Somebody blocked it. Um, based on the magnetic adhesion, you can tell it's been blocked and sanded a bit. Down here, just a foot or two off the ground, a little bit better idea, a little bit better concept of, uh, of the reflective quality. I'm standing against a wall about two and a half to three feet away, and uh, there's the emblem in my shirt. We'll go to a better lit area, but I, I, there's really, there's nothing really to complain about with regards to reflective quality in the paint. I think anybody would probably be really happy with a paint job this good. I took, took a towel and there's a few various dead bugs, etc. here and there, but uh, there's nothing that hasn't come off so far. So far, these moldings on the A-pillars were pulled and polished. There's a little tiny inny ding right there, I noticed. The vent window chrome plating is really nice. Rubber seals are all really nice. Belt moldings along top of the doors and the quarter windows, all really nice. Door handles were taken apart. Probably you sent out and replated. Locks were pulled. Whole car was disassembled, detrimmed. I'm not going to slow down and remagnetize the whole car, but 14.5, 10.5, You get the idea. 11, 11.5 on the rockers. There was a little bit of no read going on right in here in front of this splash. There we go. But right above it, I think we had oh, 20 and a half. 30. 24. 24. Okay. 14. Of that earlier total, 503 cars, a few of them went up to Canada. I think 294 were automatics. This one's an automatic. L code 440, I mentioned all of these were made in Hamtramck in a short amount of time. The very end of production, 1969. Tail light lenses are in real nice shape. Tail panel was restored. Bumpers were uh, sent out and replated is what I'm guessing. The plating is in really nice shape. Fit of the tail panel is very nice. It's a very nice gas door and then looking shooting down the side of the car you can see it's pretty straight maybe a little bit of a period wave or depression here or there but as a general rule looks like somebody blocked it out a time or two all right so that's under body that's some of the visible mechanics and suspension and exhaust paint and body chrome and trim there was nothing else ill to report on the trim on this side of the car either. Let's get under the hood, get in the interior, and take it for a drive. The owner wasn't thrilled about the idea that I had to drive the car, but I have to do that for my clients. So even on a short drive, that's what we're going to do with this one. You can see the door corners are in beautiful shape. Just a real solid example. Detail of the jams is very nice. Those look like original sill plates that were cleaned up a bit and polished. Nice, the chrome uh, finish, plastic chrome finish on the armrest bases was redone. Correct charger emblems in the door panel. And a little bit of shrinkage right here on top of this door panel I had noted earlier. The rest of it looks pretty nice. Oh man, wouldn't that be a shame if those were parked six inches closer? Okay, again, real clean door bottoms and door corners. Sorry about the black out there. Super nice uh, detail again on the um, door corners and door jams. Not much to complain about. 
the forward door corner. I couldn't get the door open far enough, but I did look at it and it looks just like that on the other side. Sill plates, same way, jams. Same detail and fashion. The glass rolls up and down as it should. You can see a few hairline uh, roller scratches. Driver's door has the most wear. Can you see that? Kind of hard to see, they're really thin. There's one right there. And a few up here. Uh, rear glass doesn't have much wear. Uh, original uh, Pentastar emblems and just a few little hairline scratches here and there. Dome lights working, courtesy lights are working. So far I haven't noticed anything on the vehicle inside that was not working. The car was registering about 62,000 miles. I can't see it. We'll take a quick peek up there. 62,410. And uh, there's a pretty nice paper trail and history of receipts and a summary in the file over there. A lot of paperwork on the car that uh, shows some of the time sequence. 69 dated seat belts. It'll come into view. There we go. Take a little bit of look under the detail of under dash is really nice, really clean. So definitely a nice comprehensive. Um, let me get that in focus a little better. There we go. Comprehensive workmanship, for sure. Something else to pay attention to on Daytona is these nose cones are available reproduction in uh, fiberglass or some type of composite. And uh, the original ones were tin, you know, they were steel. And this has got magnetic adhesion, so guess what? It's a, it's a steel unit. Um, these grills, I know, are a particularly hard thing to find and or replicate. This one looks like it's in really nice shape and seems to fit the opening well. I'm not certain though how to uh, how to define it from an uh, OEM piece versus an aftermarket piece. I believe the headlight buckets were um, a die cast. I think they're available aftermarket in some type of a composite. I'm not positive. The fit of this headlight is slightly wider here at the opening than the right side, but overall they fit together uh, really nice. Nose cone seems to fit the car nicely. A little bit of an extension here on this seal, which is kind of a newer seal. Another shot down the side of the car. And a shot down this side of the car. Alright, just dropped her down, went through and photographed the engine bay. Tranny fluid is nice and pink, the oil is nice and clean and up to the proper level. Uh, antifreeze is uh, below a good spot where I can take a photograph of it, but it appears to be green from what I can see. Inner fenders, firewall, all look very clean here. I just dipped her down to see if I can get a color sample. Well, it's a little bit damp. Hood pins, no hood release on a 69 Daytona. Well, 54 on the radiator. I just disassembled the uh, air cleaner. Crinkle finish is correct. Carter uh, carburetor decoded as J84168 SAM. VIN numbers found so far on the dash block, on the transmission, the fender tag, and the core support. That only leaves the rear body, which is uh, going to be glued over. Pretty nice day out today, 70 degrees. Floor in here is 66. We'll fire it up and carefully get off this hoist.
ignition tumbler lights working. Looks like the gauge lights are coming on and off as they should. Bright light indicator is working. Clock is turning. All pressure is at about 50 pounds. Idle kickdown is working. To get it out of this garage. I doubt a prospective buyer is going to run it in the rain, but the wipers work if necessary. works. Glove box liner looks new. Glove box light operates. Looks like we might have an original manual in there. Council appears to be in good shape. Looks like it looks like it had an oil change uh, 61,000, 591, 62, 410, about 900 miles ago, which was about uh, 13 years ago. Lid closes down nicely. Council's in real nice shape. A few hairline uh, scratches and marks here in the wood grain laminate. Dash pad I looked over and it just looks really nice upper and lower. It looks like an original piece. The grain on this looks very original to me. I don't think it's redone. Day night mirror. Seat covers the front and rear are in really nice shape in the back sides of the seat. Sets look really good as well. Quarter panel trim shows very nicely. Package tray, big and deep, and it looks original. Very slight amount of a little color fade. No pitting on the back of that chrome. If you ever wondered why they designed the wing so high, there's your answer. Clearance, clearance. So a quick, a quick recap would uh, support that the car appears to be a full rotisserie restoration with the exception of the original glass. A few more hairline scratches, roller marks on this piece that I didn't uh, mention earlier. Windshield's a replacement unit. Didn't see any rock chips in it, nothing major to speak of. Sealant's been applied here against this A-pillar. Great looking car. Owner said I could roll it up and down the driveway. Maybe I'll sneak it out on the road. He's back there on his mower. By the time he finds out, I might be gone. I mean, how can I not drive this car, right? Am I right? Ashtray was restored nicely. Both uh, vent pulls are pulling and pushing. The U.S. Supreme Court only grants cert, that is, he accepts the review of the cases. The controls are operating freely. All right, we'll take it out for a short spin just to put it through the just put it through the gears. Jason Phillips from Auto Appraise 800. 3013886 chirp in second gear there. Shifting 
from first to second, second to third, odometer does appear to be turning. Chirp second and third actually. I would imagine it's not a car that gets driven uh, much, showed more and driven infrequently. Power steering assist is uh, nice, brakes apply evenly. A blower fan I don't hear or feel coming on. Engine started to come up temperature about 180. Let's see what happens. Let it sit here and run a little bit. Lights are coming on as they should. I think those are die cast. Don't hold me to it. Go down as intended. Go ahead. See out here. Yep. Okay. Sure. Thanks. Yep. Other side. Yep. All right. I decided to go back and ask for permission because I look good in this car. And we get to go out on the road for reals. like they're turning around. I hope, I hope, I hope. I do believe my license is in my car. Not in this one. All right, hands off the wheel. And uh, the steering is real tight. A little bit of a draw to the right there, but uh, let me do it again. Oh, catching the light here, hands off the wheel, full on brakes. And the car brakes really nice and straight. No issues there. Temperature's running about uh, 200. We'll keep an eye on that. Oil pressure still above 45 pounds. Okay, haters, I got permission. Tack is operating as it should. Running about three grand right now. And 60, 62 miles an hour. Car holds the road nicely. Wheels position at about 11.30, 11.45. like it. We'll turn around head back the other direction. Uh, sometimes you get some complaints out of me, but uh, not today. Jason Phillips from Auto Appraise. I'm wrapping up a pre-purchase inspection. 1969 Daytona. R4 red, black interior, automatic power steering, power brakes car, AM radio, Comprehensive rotisserie restoration, engine VIN and transmission VIN, and fender tag VIN and dashboard VIN, as well as core support VIN, all are uh, matched. running issues to contend with. And that was the most fun miles of the week. All right, we'll take one last look around before we head out. 
Back from our test drive, still holding just over the midpoint of the gauge. 30 pounds of uh, oil pressure. Tack seems to be idling at about 650. Okay, thanks for hanging out. You'll eventually see this video if this car happens to meet the uh, purchaser's needs. Alright, have a wonderful day.